To keep Kiwis like you and Ford, no matter where you are in the world. Koto Kato, welcome along to the boil up. It's been a crazy week of news. Thora, the drummer from ACDC, stole the show this week for hiring a hitman to get someone killed. Too many things about this story shocked me. Firstly, <laughs> who knew the drummer from ACDC lived in New Zealand all these years? What? Secondly, New Zealand? Hitmen? We have these? What? It's crazy, it's got people all around the country asking all kinds of questions. Things like, do hitmen get much business here? How do they advertise their services? Do they pay income tax? Did Phil Rudd just call Heath Frank the chopper comedian thinking he's a real Uncle Chop Chop, which might explain how the police found out? Or, did he want his dirty deeds done dirt cheap? So dirt cheap that the hitman was like, how's Belgium ripping me off? I'm telling the popos on you. See what it did there? The country's been putting up with all kinds of terrible jokes like that from the news media all week. So there's your one. Anyway, the charges were later on dropped, but either way, the whole story is epically rock and roll, and it's given some great publicity to ACDC, towards ACDC, and their new album release at the end of December. So, hmm, publicity stunt? Who knows, could be. Phil might have had more chance killing his enemies by putting them on an ambulance this week, after a 17-year-old lunar driver got behind the wheel of her car just out of Rangiroa and caused this. Rock roll. <laughs> Rode off a $150,000 ambulance, broke a power pole, and I can tell you from personal experience, those things aren't cheap, and injured three ambulance officers. Probably better if she sticks to public transport from now on, but she might want to avoid the inter Islander because our putty old fairy puffed it out again this week. <laughs> the old girl stopped responding to the captain's controls, so he had to chuck down the anchors, shut off the engines to avoid hitting nearby rocks with 61 passengers on board. They're claiming uh, a technical fault, but to me, a machine disobeying its operator's controls, it can only mean one thing. Transformer in disguise, which is pretty sweet because it might protect us from Aussie's ISIS Ginger Jihadi if he comes over here and tries to take us out. Have you seen that kid? It's a cracker. Google it, especially if you've got a ginger friend. Speaking of blowing shit up, idiot of the week goes to a Hastings man who found a live grenade while he's clearing ivy. So what did he do? He wrapped it up in, in a bit of plastic. <laughs> Obviously, Leopardip has been advertising Glad too well. Anyway, he wrapped up a bit of plastic and then proceeded to transport the grenade through the township of Hastings to the police station where he presented it to the police station and uh, they had to evacuate and call the bomb squad. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> anyway, Here's something that most people will find works, it works a lot better without plastic, <laughs> without plastic wrap, especially men who love shoving things into these, especially delicious food. <laughs> Does food even go through these? Anyway, these are being plastered up all around New Zealand this week for Men's Health Week and get your mind out of the gutter. It's not a clam, vertical smile, fur burger, love hole, juice box, whatever you want to call it and I'll leave a comment in the, uh, a link in the comments so you can uh, read more of those if you want to have a look. It's actually a voice box. And uh, us here at the boil up have just realised we don't actually know where that is in the body, do we? We don't know if food goes through it or not. Anyway, <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> it's a mystery. Whales have been getting into all kinds of strife around the country this week. 60 pilot whales beached at Opotiki Bay, over Bay of Plenty. I still don't know why they call them pilot whales because they seem to be terrible nav navigators. Anyway, I think most of those died. Then down Otago on the Southland coast, a big humpback whale was spotted tangled in a rope. So Doc had to ask the public to keep an eye out for this whale. So they can send in a specialist team to untangle it. But they won't confirm whether or not they've asked Keisha, Keisha Castle Hughes to help them. And another sad story while I've dragged the mood down. This lady, Anne Barberich. She was New Air New Zealand's uh, first ever female pilot. She'd been fine for 27 years. Anyway, 
earlier on in the week, she was landing Air New Zealand's big flash new 787 Dreamliner in Perth. Perfect landing, 233 passengers on board, then boom, straight up the, after her landing, she collapsed on the ground behind the controls and she had a, like a, a brain aneurysm, which is like some kind of seizure, I think. And then later on in the week, she sadly passed away. So maximum respect to Anne, getting all those people down safely with their last little piece of energy, amazing. <laughs> had a bit of a promotional game in Chicago. When they arrived in America though, there was virtually no news media at the airport, apart from your one token New Zealand reporter, so they're a bit worried, but the game, uh, heaps of people turned out for the game, so that was all good. Then the ABs went on to Twickenham, and bet England 24-21 after a bit of a shaky start and everyone got pretty angry with the uh, the ref in that game too. Blacks have controlled possession. Hello, he wants another look. Oh, you can't do this. Well, he's he's awarded the try. You're going to need some sort of form of confirmation from somebody, somewhere, but I'm sure if you've awarded the try, how can you go back to the TMO? Sorry about that. Uh, he should be sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I can't agree yeah. with that. That's not the way that this game should be operating. He's, re he's relied on a crowd reaction of boos when they've seen something on the big screen to influence a decision he clearly made and knew was a try. England also lost the league to the Kiwis 14-16. They went out and got shit-faced and done us. One of their players got into trouble at a student flat for this. And in racing, who shot the barman? The mighty horse from Fonga, who came third in the Melbourne Cup. That's with only spending a few months with top Aussie trainer Chris Waller. So with another 12 months, fingers are crossed for the New Zealand horse to take out the big prize next year. We came at this week talking New Zealand music. 660, they're back, they've just released a pretty big single, it's called Special. I'll be playing it on Rotate all week, so it must be pretty good. It's available for download from all over the place, so make sure you check it out. Also, Ruby Frost, she's just released a new single this week, it's called Comeback Queen. She's just gone through a breakup and moved overseas, as you do after a breakup, and had her hair cut, and she's had to stop dyeing her hair pink because it was making her go bald. So if you're into that little racer, look it up. Finally, random New Zealand fact of the day. More people live in Auckland than the whole of the South Island. And only 5% of the New Zealand population is people. The rest is animals. Thanks for watching the boiler. Don't forget to tune in next week to get your fix on what's been happening back home in our